total recadera en pacientes jóvenes. Como sabemos, siempre es la disyuntiva que tenemos en, para este tipo de pacientes. ¿Qué hacer en un paciente joven? Adelante, bienvenido. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. It's a great pleasure for me to be here in Mexico, being invited by Professor Rosa, which we appreciate very much. I've been asked to discuss with you what sort of hip replacement should be selected for the young patient. And one of those topics which I think is very important to discuss that uh, we could go over what type of implants we could uh, select, um, what type of bearings would fit uh, very well for the young patient, and especially if we do have any good reasons on the long term for the young patients. So basically, out there, there is a huge amount of different implants. And if we look at the femur stem, which probably is the most uh, differentiated thing, we can discuss that very much. But we can even bring it down to also discussing should we use cement or should we use non cemented for the young patients. If we go into the literature and look for randomized studies on different implants, comparing either cement or cement or different bearings, there are very, very little documented for the young patients. There are no studies on cemented versus non-cemented designs in the young patients, so we cannot have the evidence-based medicine to help us at that level. But there are several very good studies published from single centers uh, units where they have good results with both cemented and non-cemented. But, as you have heard my colleagues from Europe, Professor Gerke, tell you about earlier that different part of Europe is different regarding what type of implant you would select. I really think that like here, also in Mexico, most of us are using a non-cemented implant for the young patients. And is this what we can prove from the literature? Is this what we should do? In my own clinic, we use the non-cemented very much. And the reasons here is listed. And especially those in the box feel very much in my clinic. I think they have a better survival, and I'll show you this later on for, uh, from the registers. But they're definitely not cheaper. If we go for having cheap implants, we have to use the cemented implants. To my best knowledge, they are easier to implant, and they are clearly quicker. When we come to a revision case, we cannot say for sure that it's easier to revise a non cemented implant. Maybe it's easier to revise a cemented. We can discuss this later on. In my clinic, we are producing heavy uh, doc uh, documentation on rapid recovery treatment, so therefore we need a quick turnover. So doing non-cemented makes maybe one case more per theater per day. But we should don't forget that one of the main reasons for us to use non-cemented implant is that the industry very much loves to sell us what they think is the best. And also here, price is some of the issues. And we as surgeons, would we use the old model forever? No, I don't think. I think most of us would change by behavior by time so that we would love to play with the new modern implants instead of using old fashioned implants. And if we discuss with the patients, many of the patients coming in our clinics today, they are educated. They have been on the internet. They know about prices. They know about implants. They come and ask for the best and they think that the most expensive thing are the best. Bearings, this is not what I will discuss very much with you, but I think clearly that the hard and hard bearings are these to be used for the young patients. This is proven in more uh, papers, and this is one of the papers, and I'm sorry to the busy slides here, but it simply tells you that ceramic or ceramic, what is the best bearings given from the little two for the young patients. They have the ever best survivor. Europe are very indifferent. We can go across Europe and find different techniques. Even across a small area like the Scandinavian countries, we are very indifferent. So I will try to deal with you some research from the Scandinavian articles to register on what we should select of impact for our young patients. These are, as you can see, very indifferent, and I will give you now research from my own country, the Danish Hip Arthroplastic Register, 
we have been running this register for 20 years, and we have now very good reasons and documented and proven because all HIP cases being operated in Denmark are reported to the register. Then, as you can see, Denmark is nearby and uncemented. We do a few hybrid and very, very few cemented cases. So my country is very much non-cemented. And if you look at this survival curve, this is um, at all cases. You can see here very clearly that those who are doing the best are the elderly. They have the highest survival of all cases, whether it's cemented or non-cemented. And those who are doing it most poorly are the young cases. This is not new. This is uh, well known that young patients having an implant for many years has a higher risk of being revised. They are using the implant much more than the elderly patients. So the green line here is the young patients, and the yellow line is the elderly patients. If we now look at the young patients and try to look at males and females, there are no major differences. There's a small difference so that the males looks like having a higher survival than the female, but this is not significant. But if we try to look at type of fixation and look at the young cases below 50 years of age, to the, to the left you have revision for all reasons, and to the right you have revision for aseptic loosening. It's very clear here, the green is the young patient below 50 years of age, it's very, very clear here that type of fixation is the non cemented cases are doing very best for aseptic loosening. So in conclusion from the Danish race studies that non-cemented designs reduce the risk three to fourfold for the young patients being revised for SFD groups. If we go across the sea from Denmark, we come to Sweden. They have the longest history of the register. They have data for more than 30 years now. Sweden, as also told by Professor Gerger, is very cemented. They have a long tradition on working with cement. They are now smallly going to use some of the non-cemented implant too, but mainly they are cemented over there. They have been doing a lot of good education for their surgeons to be better in doing cement, and by this they kept on staying with cemented implants. This is a little busy slice, and this is only the cup size, as you can see. It looks very clearly that in the young patients, the cup survival is this is the young patient here. The uncemented cup is doing a bit better than the cemented cup. So this is a price even for the Swedish people when they look at the young people. They have no dedicated data on the stem, but they have some the data which shows if you look to the, to the right, you have the loosening advices for the operation for provision. It's very clearly that the non-cemented stem are doing better even in Sweden. In the young patients. So, in conclusion, the dancing in the stem designs reduce the risk of being revived by the illusion also in Sweden. So, the Scandinavian registers can prove about stems. They are not very good about cups, but it looks like the dancing in the stem is the best to select for the young patients. They have the best survival. This is a very interesting uh, study from Finland. Finland is also part of the Nordic area. They have been looking at and tried these patients and looked at the different types of coating for both the cups and for the stems, which are the best for the patients, including also in the research the cemented. The cemented here is the red one, and the uh, first coated thing is the blue. So what you can see is a non-cemented, a non-cemented first coated implant is doing is the coating which is doing the best in the uh, young generation patients. But you can discuss whether fixation does matter or not. These are two cases from the historical part of my clinic. And both, in fact, although the x-rays look crazy, I do them really well. This is a uh, not young patient, but elderly patients, but they have well functioning hips, uh, which may be unbelievable. So really does fixation matter anything? All of us has been through this resurfacing, metal on metal, and we know that this was a very, very hot thing. We recommended this for our young patients. We maybe was too quick on implementing it as worldwide. 
maybe we should have been waiting on running railroad studies. But all of us know today what risk factors there are by the middle and middle uh, bearings also and the uh, as a standard. So I appreciate the former president Tyson, uh, which really stated for us that the new technique should be kept in few hands. When we are using new implants like the short implants, um, these probably will be part of the future. But this should not be spread. We should not have another middle on middle problem with the young patients. Because our young patients are coming to us and asking for these implants. They know about it. So we are the professionals who should tell them to care, wait until we can see in very good studies how they are doing. Even a case like this, it, it looks fancy. And for someone who say, well, this is bone sparing surgery, um, I'm not sure that I myself would have this implant just now. I would love to see good results on it before I start using this in my clinic. So for me, still some of these other implants are experimental. We've been seeing here from the registers that the best the results we can give our young patients today is the non cemented that they are not dramatically away from the cemented implant, but implant like this is still experimental and should be avoided on a large scale. Thank you very much.